I'm Frank Massa, the resource manager here at Dell Hall, and I'd like to welcome all you folks to our celebration for 50 years completion of the project here. And I do appreciate you coming out and starting this celebration with us, and we will continue uh, through the year as, as our 50th year. And to get things started, we're running just a little bit late already. I'm going to go ahead. We've got uh, the MC here that's no stranger to Clay County or Del Hollow Lake, either one. He's an avid uh, fisherman, sportsman, and he's probably the best weatherman I know of. He forecasts this weather for us, and I don't think he could have done a better job. And it's no one, none other than our own Bill Hall from Channel 4, their weatherman. I, I'll let him take over as our MC. Well, thank you very much, Frank, for those kind words, and good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and it is indeed an honor, at the least, for me to be here with you this morning. This is certainly uh, my part of the world, my part of the country, and I wouldn't trade today for any day in my past life. Uh, Frank, I'm not sure I've caught all those fish here in Dale Hollow Lake. I did have some help. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's so nice to see all of you here this morning as we look around. Uh, the trees and everything are starting to turn. I made the drive uh, up 31 uh, into uh, Gallatin and from Gallatin over to uh, Hartsville and then from Lafayette over through Red Boiling Springs into here. And it is certainly a beautiful part of the country. And uh, I'm just really grateful and thankful to my good friend, Dr. Stoney Merriman, who uh, let me take part in this uh, activity today, uh, and it is indeed an honor for a former soldier, an ex-GI, and as Stoney calls me, the young weatherman. <laughs> and before proceeding any further, let me introduce our distinguished officials here on stage. Uh, let me start with the uh, front row. To my right is the gentleman you just met, uh, Mr. Frank Massa, who welcomed us to the, this fantastic project. Frank is the Dale Hollow Resources Manager with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Next is uh, Mr. Shirley Jones. Mr. Jones is the Dale Hollow Power Plant Superintendent with the Corps of Engineers. Uh, next is Dudley Korth, a fellow I've known for some time and spent a little time with. Dudley is the Hatchery Chief uh, with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services. Next is State Senator Tommy Burks. Good morning to you, Senator. Uh, next is State Representative Les Winningham, and uh, good morning to you, Congressman. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel David Norwood is next. Colonel Norwood is the commander of the Nashville District, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, and an uh, excellent, just a fine fellow and a good old Tennessean. Next is Mr. Gary Myers, uh, Myers who was with him last night in, uh, at another event. Mr. Myers is the Executive Director of the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency. Always good to see the man who's in charge of taking good care of Tennessee wildlife, including some of us. Next is Mr. Billy G. Smith. Now, Billy is Congressman Bart Gordon's field director for this region. We welcome him. Uh, next to him is Robin Thompson. Robin is a member of Senator Jim Sasser's Nashville staff. And next is a fine fellow, Richard Nearling. Richard is the associate manager of fisheries with the uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service out of Atlanta, Georgia. And the last person on the front row, and I might add, uh, no, she's also the prettiest. <laughs> she's none other than Miss Amanda Burns. Now, Amanda is uh, from this beautiful area, uh, and uh, just, just hang on a second, because not only is she a fantastic young lady, she's one of the greatest marble shooters in the entire United States. <laughs> Amanda recently earned a national championship, and Amanda will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance in just a few minutes. Now, on the second row is a dear friend. I've known him for almost 20 years. As a matter of fact, we, his relatives and I are next door neighbors. Uh, he's Mr. Bobby Bartlett. Bobby is a school teacher. He's also a minister and an all-around fine person. And he will lead us in the invocation and later give us the benediction. Next, we have uh, Coel Hickman. Coel is the county executive for Clay County, Tennessee. And of course, you know that's where we are right now. Uh, next uh, is uh, Mr. Ossie Mitchell. 
He is the county executive or county executive from Overton County, and he's with us this morning. Uh, next to him is another mayor, Mayor Joe Dan of Salina, which is, you know, just down the road, just came through there this morning. Uh, Rick Connor is next. Uh, Mr. Connor is the chief engineering and planning division, or is the chief of engineering and planning division with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, next, we have Johnny McAllister. Uh, he's the director of the Southeastern Power Administration out of Atlanta. Uh, next is my cousin, well, <laughs> Mr. Dan Hall. Uh, <laughs> Dan is the Chief Operations, Construction, and Readiness Division, or with that group, uh, with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Ron Raines is next. Mr. Raines is the Chief Natural Resources Branch of the National District Corps of Engineers. I like Army officers. <laughs> Major Randy Rapp is next. Major Rapp is the Deputy District Commander with the Corps out of Nashville. Next is Bruce Dunn. Bruce is the uh, Area Superintendent of Center Hill, Cordell Hull, as well as Dale Hollow's Power Plant with the uh, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Ed Brooks is next. Mr. Brooks is the Director of the Upper Cumberland Development Association with the State of Tennessee, and his office is over in Putnam County in Cookville. Lastly but not least is David Mr. Mr. Miss, I practiced on this man's name for two days. <laughs> Mr. Kovich. <laughs> and of course, David is the acting chief of the hydropower branch with the Corps of Engineers. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in giving our stage guest a big hand. And ladies and gentlemen, here they are. Now let's get on with the program. First, uh, let's give, we'll have the uh, Pledge of Allegiance to our wonderful flag. Ms. Amanda Burns, will you please come to the podium and lead us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Thank you, Amanda. There's something about the Pledge of Allegiance, as you all know, and no doubt you all feel, that just gives you goosebumps. It makes you just proud to be an American, especially in these uh, turbulent times throughout the world today. We're going to call on another good friend and patriot, Mr. Bobby Bartlett. Will you please come to the podium and give us the invocation, please? Let us bow. Our Father, we are grateful that we live in a free land where we can, as free people, meet together under any lawful conditions to discuss the things which pertain to our community. Help us on this occasion and give us wisdom to accomplish the best for the cause in which we are now interested. Let us be thankful for the last 50 years in which we have enjoyed this beautiful Dell Holler project. With all of its educational and recreational facilities, bless our families, our homes, and our country. Help us all to be aware of the fact that no one can live to himself and still perform the duties which must be performed and please the Lord. Bless every effort for the good on all things done which are consistent with thee. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Bartlett, for those inspiring words. And next on the program is Mr. Billy G. Smith, from Congressman Bart Gordon's office, Mr. Smith. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Bill. Uh, Congressman Gordon sends regrets that he couldn't be here today, but there were some important votes, although this is an important event here, there were some important votes coming up today that he could not be here, so therefore he asked me to be here in his behalf. He sends a few words here, and also, if you will, I would like to read uh, what was put in the congressional record 
pertaining to this event today. Dale Holla Lake, 50 years of contribution. More than 50 years ago, the Corps of Engineers embarked on a project of great magnitude for the time. They created Dale Holla Lock and Dam. The result was electricity for one of our nation's most rural areas and security for a region long ravaged by flooding. But today, Dale Holla is far more than just flood control and electricity. It is one of the most scenic spots in America. And as a home to the American Bald Eagle, Dale Holla has been an immense source of pride. It provides jobs, tourism, and economic strength. But most importantly, it has been a wise investment in the people who bring warmth and vitality to this great region. Today, let us not only celebrate the 50 years of what Dale Holla has been, but also let the look forward to the promise and opportunity that Dale Holla can provide for the next 50 years. If I may, I will read the congressional record uh, as of uh, Tuesday, October the 12th, 1993. Dale Holla Lake, 50 years of contribution. This is from Con uh, Congressman Bart Gordon, the House of Representatives. Mr. Gordon, Mr. Speaker, 50 years ago, Tennessee's beauty was greatly enhanced and its upper coming of reason was enriched with a resource that dramatically changed the community. 50 years ago, Dale Hollow Lake was completed. Set between the Obie River and the Cumberland River, Dale Hollow Dam has begun by the U.S. Corps of Engineers in March 1942. The Corps completed the impoundment in June 1943. Since then, the dam has saved an estimated 43 million in flood damage by taming the waters that repeatedly flooded the era in the early 1900s. This early success set a precedent for later core projects on the Cumberland River. Additionally, Dale Holler has produced energy for homes and businesses throughout much of Tennessee and Kentucky. The contrib contributions of Dale Holler Lake go far beyond electricity production and flood control. Even before Dale Hall was providing electricity for the people of the Upper Cumberland, water enthusiasts began flocking to the lake. Each of the 50 years had been seen increases in numbers of visitors at the rate of attracting 3.6 million in the lake's 27,700 acres last year. The lake and its nearly 620 acres of poplar, cedar, oak trees offer boating, camping, hiking, fishing, and a complete list of outdoor activities. Even our nation's most beloved symbol, the American Bald Eagle, feels the beauty and serenity of Dale Hollow. Brought here by the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency and the Corps of Engineers years ago, the majestic birds have flourished and thrived. Annually, thousands of visitors travel to see the eagles, finding 91 in 1992. Other wildlife also attract visitors. Largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, white bass, and spotted bass swim the waters of the lake and delight the skills of anglers. With the supervision of Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency, the lake also includes black crappie, white crappie, bluegill, walleye, catfish, and muskie. Tennessee's largest muskie was caught in Dale Hollow. It weighed 43 pounds. A smallmouth bass, all 11 pounds and 15 ounces, was caught there and stood as a world record for several years. Trout also inhabit the river as a product of the Dale Hollow Natural National Hatchery, the largest producer of trout east of the Mississippi River. These recreation attractions, coupled with the warmth of the people who near, live near the lake, continue to invite visitors back to the lake. Last year alone, 68.5 million was contributed to the economy by the people who took advantage of Dale Hollow. Innumerable jobs depend on the lake, and innumerable families depend on these jobs. The air is blessed with Dale Hollis' beauty, and Tennessee is blessed with the air's contribution to the economy. These vital contributions will be celebrated on October the 15th, 1993, with a celebration uh, sponsored by the U.S. Corps of Engineers at Dale Hollow Lake. I invite my colleagues to join in that celebration and in continued praise for the people involved in the creation of the lake and those who maintain its beauty. At this time, if you would, I would ask Colonel Norwood to come forward, if you will, sir. I would like to present to you a copy or the, of the con congressional record. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> <clears throat> Thank you, Billy. Being in the congressional record itself is an achievement for Dale Hollow, 
and one it has definitely earned. There's no doubt Mr. Robin Thompson from Senator James Sasser's office is next. Uh, Senator Sasser, you might recall, is our senior senator. And Robin, you're on. Thank you, Bill. As Bill said, my name is Robin Thompson. I work as an assistant to Senator Jim Sasser. <clears throat> senator Sasser couldn't be here this morning. He's in Washington. But he's asked me to read a letter that he has written to commemorate the occasion. <clears throat> Officials of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, friends of Dale Hollow Lake, and honored guests, thank you for including me in this morning's ceremony. I was honored to be invited, and I wish I could be with you to celebrate Dale Hollow Lake's 50th anniversary. The Senate is in session, and the majority leader has scheduled a number of votes, so I will be spending the day in Washington. Dale Hollow is a tremendous success story, and I congratulate all of you who are responsible for this success. The dam has protected the residents and land of the Cumberland River Basin since 1943, and citizens throughout the area have benefited from the hydroelectricity generated by the dam. The clear blue water has made Dale Hollow Lake a popular site for recreational activities. At an initial cost of $28 million, Dale Hollow Lake has paid for itself many times over in the form of flood prevention, hydroelectric revenues, and economic development. I encourage all of you who have worked so hard to make Dale Hollow Lake a national landmark to continue your efforts, and hopefully we will be celebrating Dale Hollow's anniversaries for years to come. Thank you. Sincerely, Jim Sasser, United States Senator. Thank you, Robin. Did he seem a little nervous or tense to you folks? Wonder why. Well, I know. Robin, I hear you recently married a beautiful young lady. Congratulations. And thanks for representing our fine senator. <laughs> Mr. Gary Myers, and sir, if you're ready to represent our governor, and your outstanding agency, I give you Mr. Gary Myers. Thank you. I'm nervous too, and I'll bet he doesn't know why. If you <laughs> see that little box there, that's why. I don't know what that is. Uh, <clears throat> I really wanted to just come here this morning and express our agency's appreciation to the Colonel, to the Corps, to the people who made the Dale Hollow Project work. Uh, we have, I guess, seen the benefits of this project for years and years. Uh, it has produced a world record smallmouth for us. We appreciate that, Colonel. Uh, I understand it did pretty good on Muskie in Kentucky, too. The Corps has worked with us in the, the stocking of the eagles, uh, deer, turkey, uh, they've supported our regulations that we put in place here that we think have helped make the resources a little bit better, and that hasn't always been easy. Uh, they provide water for the hatchery down below here, and they're cooperating right now in the construction of an addition to the, the hatchery just below here, which will make it, uh, they said, the largest hatchery, uh, trout hatchery east of the Mississippi River. I understand it will be the largest trout hatchery in the federal system when they get done, and it will only cost about $1.1 million. That's not much money. We're building another one uh, over in Middle Tennessee, spending about $4 million. And uh, it's, we're not nearly getting the bang for the buck that we will be getting here because of the cooperation that we enjoy with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and the Corps of Engineers. So uh, on behalf of the agency, uh, we appreciate the project. We, we appreciate the cooperative spirit of the Corps of Engineers and the other federal agency, the Fish and Wildlife Service. Uh, now I'm going to represent the state of Tennessee and the governor. They ask that I present on behalf of Governor Ned Ray McWhorter, Tennessee's Outstanding Achievement Award. If you would come up here. This is conferred in recognition of services performed so as to preserve and enhance the tradition of Tennessee excellence, which is the pride of our people. 50th anniversary. Congratulations and thank you. Thank you.
Thanks, Gary. You know, I wonder if the governor will give me one of those beautiful certificates if I can last 50 years in the weather business. <laughs> Mr. Richard Nearling, I hope I'm not mispronouncing his name, uh, who's with the uh, U.S. Uh, Fish and Wildlife Service, uh, I'm told is a fantastic individual and is doing a great uh, many things for the country. And if you're ready, sir, would you please come to the mic? Richard. Thank you, Bill. On behalf of the service's regional director, Jim Pulliam, in Atlanta, and our assistant regional director, John Brown, who's also in Atlanta, and Dudley Corp, the hatchery manager, Dale Hollow, and his great staff here, we appreciate the opportunity to share with the Corps in the celebration of the 50th anniversary of the Dale Hollow project. The service has operated the Dale Hollow hatchery since 1966. Uh, the hatchery is located on Corps property. Dudley Korth, the manager, has been the manager at Dale Hollow since 1972. Our facility rears trout to stock throughout Tennessee to mitigate fish losses caused by the construction of federal water development projects. Two, three years ago, in 1990, the service entered a memorandum of agreement with the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency for the ongoing expansion of the facility at at, at Dale Hollow. Also at that time, the Corps entered into an agreement to design, to contract, and to, and to manage the expansion construction. The expansion will provide an additional 350,000 nine-inch fish, that's approximately 100,000 pounds, and these fish are needed to, for us, the, the federal government, better meet the federal mitigation requirements in Tennessee. As Mr. Meyer said, once the expansion is completed, the facility will be the largest hatchery in the Fish and Wildlife Service's National Fish Hatchery System. None of this expansion would, would have been possible without the excellent partnership that the service has enjoyed with the Tennessee Wildlife Resource, Resources Agency and the Corps of Engineers. The state of Tennessee provided the recommendation to expand Dale Hollow and the funding required for that expansion. The Corps has very effectively provided the extensive expertise and assistance required to make this project a reality. What we have here, we feel, is an excellent example of what can be done to conserve and maintain our fisheries resources when people and agencies care and cooperatively, cooperatively work together. We in the Fish and Wildlife Service are extremely proud to be a partner with the Corps and with the state in this ongoing effort and for the continued operation of the Dale Hollow facility in the future. Again, pre we, the service appreciates the opportunity to share with everybody here the 50th anniversary of the Dale Hollow project. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Uh, for those of you who know, I'm, I'm, I'm just a simple, ordinary person. I see some of the photojournalists here, I guess they're from the uh, Nashville stations. And the last time I was with Dudley Korth up here, we took some tape, made some tape that didn't turn out too well. And Dudley, I think we, this will turn out fine. Walter Lowe from Channel 4 and the other fellows, we thank you all for being here this morning. Uh, you know, Richard, I didn't realize the uh, regional headquarters for the uh, Fish and Wildlife Services are in Atlanta, Georgia. Learn something new every day. Thanks, and the more fish you put in our lakes and streams, better I like it. <laughs> and I think I speak for the vast majority of the other men and women, kids who fish our lakes, rivers, and streams. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for our anniversary address. It's only proper for the commander of this fine facility to uh, give that address. So without further ado, Colonel Norwood, podium is yours, sir. I'd like to say uh, welcome. Welcome to Del Hollow. Uh, I'd like to uh, add my uh, welcome to the distinguished guests that are here at the podium today. But I'd especially like to welcome those of you here that own this place. Uh, the Corps of Engineers, part of the United States Army, we operate and maintain this facility. But it belongs to the taxpayers. It's part of the national assets, and we keep it as a trust for you. And I'm glad that you could be here today to help us celebrate its 50th anniversary. 
There's some people in the last 50 years and even today that have done a lot to help maintain that public trust. Uh, those out there that are members of the uh, core family that actually works here at Del Hollow, if you're sitting down here, please stand. If you're out there, would you raise your hand so that we can recognize you? Thanks. This, this group right down here that I'd especially like to acknowledge, these are retirees, those that have uh, put in many, many years in the past and are here today to help us celebrate. Thanks for being here today. Really appreciate it. This project was authorized way back in the Flood Control Act of 1938. Uh, it was completed for flood control in 1943. Then there was some uh, further administrative uh, legislation that uh, authorized in the River and Harbor Act of 1946 that allowed us to go ahead and complete the project in terms of putting in the hydroelectric facilities, the turbines, and the generators to uh, produce the hydropower. The lake itself extends 61 miles upstream from the dam and it has about 620 miles of shoreline that we manage. During February and March of 1945, this dam held back nearly 300,000 cubic feet of floodwaters. Very shortly after it was built, it was, came into its first test as a flood control project. It was the first Cumberland River project that therefore was able to say that it had really reduced flood damages. And over the years, we estimate that there's probably been $46 million worth of damages that have been prevented by this project right here. The power in the hydro plant, it generates about an 18,000 kilowatt capacity. And these units were put in consecutively in 1948, 1949, and 1953. And they provide a total hydroelectric capacity now of 54,000 kilowatts. This past year alone, the plant here at Del Hollow produced 103 million kilowatt hours of electricity. And that returned a total of over $9 million to the United States Treasury. The initial cost of this project was $52 million. Now, admittedly, that was 1940s dollars. But this year alone, the lake had about 3.5 million visitors. And what they returned to the local economy in terms of uh, dollars spent and commerce that they generated was equal to $68 million alone. It's hard to compare current dollars to 1945 dollars, but you see that every year as that type of income comes back into the local community, this project has certainly paid for itself when you combine the flood damage preventions, the hydroelectric generation of revenues, and the local economy generation as a result of the recreational areas. Now, when the Corps impounded the Obi River to create this lake, the waters changed from a warm, uneven flow to a deep coal reservoir. And so it changed the nature of the habitat for the fish that were here. Conditions were not as favorable for the ones that had been here before. And Del Hollow National Fish Hatchery, however, has helped us to overcome that problem. It was constructed in 1966. And since then, we've seen a real introduction of the, of the trout, both the rainbow and the brown, into the Obi River downstream. It's done a lot to increase the recreational value of the local area here. Uh, you know that the, uh, you've, you've already been told the uh, facility downstream here is, is operated by Dudley Corth and his folks. They do a great job. Uh, they've got 64 raceways over there. I'd encourage you today sometime during the open house to go on down there, take a look at their existing facilities, take a look at the new raceways that are being built. The uh, Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency, as uh, Mr. Myers just said, he just spoke a few minutes ago, uh, are help, helping us in this project, in this, in this whole um, sequence of, of construction events as we look at how we can continue to improve the natural resources of this area and make it a place not only for recreation for the uh, swimmers and the boaters but for the fishermen also. Uh, in addition to the trout, fishermen here also pull in a lot of large and smallmouth bass. We have white and spotted bass, we have black and white crappie, we have bluegill, walleye, and catfish. And somebody alluded to the fact a minute ago that we even have the world record smallmouth bass, 11 pounds and 15 ounces, that came out of the lake here. The lake's been a popular spot for scuba diving, and there's over 400 rental and privately owned houseboats that stay on the lake. They take advantage of its 27,700 acres and 61 miles of length. Now, Del Hollow is also known, as you've been told, as one of the best places in the United States to be able to see the American bald eagle. From 1987 to 1991, the Corps participated in a repopulation program with the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency in which we brought 
eaglets here from Alaska and Wisconsin, introduced them to the area, and they are, in fact, thriving. On the third Saturday of January every year, Del Hollow Resource Manager's Office, Frank Massa and his folks, they sponsor an eagle watch. And this past year, 626 eagle watchers were out, and they managed to spot 89 of our national birds here in the lake. So with all these benefits, it goes without saying that the Del Hollow Project has probably been an outstanding investment in the country and for the people of this area in particular. I'm indeed proud to be commander of the Nashville Engineer District and proud to be able to say that the folks of the Nashville District, they don't look lightly upon their responsibilities and they are very, very, very dedicated in terms of keeping the National Trust and taking care of this facility that belongs to you, the American public. Thank you very much. Thank you, Colonel Norwood. You know, ladies and gentlemen, uh, when I was in the Army, back with Custer, <laughs> you know, officers always gave me orders, orders after orders after orders. And now it's finally my turn to give an order. And I might add seriously, respectfully, even if it's just a little one. Colonel, you are now directed <laughs> to the old dynamite plunger. <laughs> and Dan Hall, will you please assist the Colonel in sitting off the symbolic blast? I think that's my first and last order, order to an officer. <laughs> yeah, somebody said kill some fish. Last time I'll try that. Seriously though, we want to thank you all and thanks to the blasting team in the woods. Colonel and Dan couldn't have uh, done it without uh, you ladies and gentlemen. Now let's give the plungers, the flagman, and the master blasters a hand. You know, that blast made me kind of hungry, and while we're on the subject, there are hamburgers and hot dogs and sodas being sold by the friends of Dale Hollow over by the shelter. And don't forget, uh, the Corps and the Fish and Wildlife Services extend to you a hearty open house uh, invitation to all of you who visit uh, every time and who, vi who visit each of the projects. The power plant is behind me. The lake manager's office, of course, for those of you who don't know, is up the hill and to my right and to the hatchery behind you. It, stays on my, it says on my script to introduce, introduce Frank Massa again for closing remarks, but there's a blank next to that. I, okay, Frank, I don't know what this is, but uh, you're on the air, so to speak. Bill, you can come back up here. Huh? You can come back up here. Or is any yeah. more dynamite? A little more dynamite. <laughs> As all of you know, Dell Hall has been kind of unique, being the first project for the Nashville District. Uh, there's been several uh, discoveries made here. The uh, Dell Hollow houseboat was designed here on Dell Hollow. Um, customized uh, lures have been made here on the lake. Uh, we do hold the world record uh, for a smallmouth. And we went out here and got some of our uh, skilled people to make you a custom rod. All right that you can have and uh, be able to use to catch some of our uh, well, new you. records. You might uh, want should, to go ahead and unload. Should, should I open yeah, it? Yeah, you need to open that. Did he say open or unload? <laughs> I don't believe it. Frank, the way my fishing's going these days, I'll try anything, even this. <laughs> Thank you. Bill, a uh, real hearted thanks. We do appreciate you coming out here and supporting us and, and participating with us and helping us. 
and to show that our heart is in the right place and everything, we do have you another little gift. Here. Oh, well, can I go back? Yeah. Here's you another little gift, and we appreciate well, all this you've done. For us. Well, thank you very much, Frank. You thank you, sir. Okay. This is, I didn't expect gifts, but I, oh, this is magnificent. How about that? Something I shall treasure from now on. I thank you, my fellow citizens and Tennesseans, as well as taxpayers. Now, uh, I, that threw me off my schedule here. <laughs> now, I know why Stoney left that section out of my script, I guess, or why he left it blank. Goodness, uh, both of these are really great gifts, folks, and I assure you, as I said, I will treasure them from now on. Uh, there's one more question. Uh, uh, I signed this over uh, at Naomi's table just a few moments before walking up the stairs. And uh, if I hadn't have uh, taken so long to get it, I didn't think it was going to take, I thought it would take him forever to get it framed. Uh, well, since I'm getting hungry, and I'm sure you are too, folks, uh, let's end the ceremony uh, in the correct way. And we'll ask for the help uh, of an individual again, uh, Mr. Bobby Bartlett. Uh, Bobby, will you please uh, come and give us a benediction? We thank each of you for coming and taking part in this great celebration. Heavenly Father, as we leave this place, may we always be grateful and thankful for life itself. May each Heavenly Father, as we return to our destination, have a safe journey there. These and other blessings we ask in thy son Jesus' name. Amen. 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 That concludes our ceremony. Have a wonderful anniversary day. From Nashville's Channel 4, WSMV, bringing you Demetria Kalodimos and Jeff McAtee with the news, Rudy Kalis Sports, and Bill Hall's weather on the Channel for News. This is the scene at 6. Bill Hall is here now, and you have something special to talk Yes, ma'am. I hope you get your voice back. I yeah. lost it at the Tennessee-Alabama game this well, weekend. That's a good cause, wouldn't you say, Jim? Yeah, well, I guess that's so. right. That's right. Uh, yeah. but no, but I wanted to thank some folks, Laura and Jeff, because uh, I wasn't here last Friday, but right. I was uh, right. uh, with the U U.S. Army Corps of Engineers up at uh, the, uh, the uh, Dale Hollow Project the, for the 50th anniversary of that project, begun back in actually 42, I believe, but from 43 to 93. And I wanted to thank all the people from Clay County and Salina and those areas, Dr. Stoney Merriman, Colonel Norwood, and basically the people who invited me to come up there and be a part of that, uh, the festivities and beautiful area. Dudley Korth, the uh, fisheries manager we've seen before, and did, uh, just had a great day up there Friday. 50 years. 50 years. That's almost as old as some people. <laughs> almost. Okay. We won't mention who. Okay, well, Dan.